Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, a Shalom. It's your brother Halak here from the GMS Denver camp, coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And today we're going to go into 2 Maccabees chapter 6. We're going to read through the whole thing. And this is a story of uh, one of our righteous forefathers, man, standing in great boldness in his faith and, and refusing, you see, to go along with the bullshit the enemy came with. And he is set forth as an example of what we have to do here in these last days, man. When it really goes down, when it's all said and done, you see, when ain't no more going on the highways and byways, when ain't no more doing no videos, you see, when, when shit really goes down, we're going to have to stand like this like this forefather here. You see, Eleazar, man. This is what it's going to have to be. And before we get into it, we're going to get Romans chapter 15 verse 4 says what? For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You see? This is why we have all our history written down, man, so we can go back and read it and see what Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah has done for man, done for us. We can go back and see how Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah has put the spirit upon our righteous forefathers to stand in great boldness in, uh, in great boldness for righteousness sake, even in the face of death, man. So we can so we can have something to look forward to to know and understand that we can do it, man. We can do it through faith, and that's exactly the spirit that the remnant is going to take into this time of Jacob's trouble, which is fastly approaching. You see, a time of trouble where our enemies are going to persecute us, man. You see, and this is what we read right here in Second uh, Second Maccabees chapter six. We were being persecuted by the Greeks. Now let's read through this chapter. It says what. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and to not and not to live after the laws of the Most High. And guess what? The same thing is coming down, man, because at the end of the day, the rulers of this world, the Edomites, the elite of Esau, you see, beginning with the top international banking families, they don't want any semblance of righteousness in the earth. And this is why we see society moving in the direction that is moving. See, this is why we're being persecuted. This is why we have a uh, video strike and our channels taken down. It's because they don't want us to preach this gospel unto our people. They don't want our people to be in the spirit to repent and, re and return back to the Most High. They don't want our people uh, upholding the righteous standard, which is the law, statutes, and commandments that the Most High has given us, man. You see? They want all of us to depart from the laws of our fathers to walk in the, uh, and to walk in the way of the wicked. Verse 2 says what? And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of, temple of Jupiter Olympus, which is basically fucking Zeus. You see? And that at Gerizim of Jupiter, of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the place. The coming in of, the, of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy place, places. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. So they just defiled our temple, man. You see? And that's the same thing they want to do with it because now we're the temple. They want to defile us. They want us to do all matter of profane and unclean things, man. And why is that? It's because they want to keep us separated from the Most High, man. They want us. They want to keep us separated from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. They don't want us repenting and walking in the upright way. They want us to continue to be niggas. 
When I say niggas, I'm, I'm talking about all of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All of you are niggas. In the sight of these, in the sight of these people, you're all the same. But this is how they want us to be, man. In a wicked, rebellious, pro, uh, profane spirit. Hey, but what do we have? What, but what do we have, man? We have the remnant standing up through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, saying what to hell with that wickedness, man. We're gonna walk in the way of righteousness. This is the spirit that Esau is afraid of. He loves what two thirds are doing. He loves that they're in the spirit to, to, to murder each other, to be homos and lesbians, to be out here committing adultery. They, Esau wants two thirds of our people in that spirit because what he knows that keeps us separate, keeps them separated from their power. This is why he, he pushes that vibration to what? Do as thou wilt. That's wickedness, man. Especially for our people. It goes on to say. Verse 5, it says, The altar also was filled with profane things, which the law forbiddeth. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. And guess what? These times are coming again, man. When it really goes down, all of you who are uh, faking the funk playing Israelite because it's cute to you, it's a trend, it's a fad, you get to wear fringes, the time is going to come when shit is going to get daily serious. Well, you know what? It's already daily serious. You're you just playing games with it. But these, these damn devils are going to come down having great wrath, man, as it tells us in the book of Revelation 12 and 12. And it's going to be against the law for us to be who we are. This is not a game, man. And the ones we're reading about are the same people who are in rulership now, the damn Edomites. But at this time, they were calling themselves what? Greeks. And they're going to come with the same madness, man. Now listen, verse 7 says what? And in, and in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices, and when and when the fe and when the fast of Bacchus was kept, I should say feast, and when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. So they were forcing our people to eat abominable uh, sacri uh, things offered unto sacrifice. They was forcing our people to keep wicked ass holidays. Is that not what they're doing now? Why do you think you're celebrating these pagan holidays, uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving and Halloween, man? It all goes back to some type of idol. This ain't nothing new, man. It's nothing new. Verse 8 says what? Well, moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews, that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. And this is what Esau wants us to do. He wants us to depart from Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, and walk in the ways of the heathen. You see? Because they want to defile us, man. Why? Because these people hate us. They don't want us to be tied to our power. They want us to be out here in a wicked, filthy, defiled state so the most I won't deal with us anymore because Esau is trying to get that birthright back. <laughs> you see that? And guess what? This is what they're coming with in this time. This is what this whole new world order is all about. Us, especially the Israelites, us so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, bending the knee and, and, and basically bowing unto their idols, man. This is, what, this is what Esau wants to do. And he's going to take it to the point to where if you don't want to get down with the program, he's going to put you to death. Because he, don't, he doesn't need any rebellion in this new world order. See, you Israelites really don't understand what you have been brought into. This thing is deadly serious, man. And it's, it's going to get more and more deadly the closer we get to the end. Because listen, verse 9 says what? And matter of fact, now verse 9 says what? And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. This is what's coming back around, man. That which is then is now. There is no new thing under the sun. That's This is what these fucking, these, uh, these devils are coming with. 
if you don't get along with the if you don't go along with the program, if you're not for the LGBT whatever bullshit, if you're not for the wicked doctrines and philosophies, if you're not for the artificial intelligence, we we see it happening, man. We see all the censorship going on right now because hey, we're the most censored group on on YouTube. We see what happens when we, we speak on certain topics. We get our video struck. We see where it's going, man. Because we're not conforming with the bullshit that Esau is coming with. We've been made a prey. Let's get that real quick. Yep. Isaiah 59 and uh, 15, it says what? Let's get 14. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth for fall, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Why? Because the wicked are being ruled. They're not for truth. They're not for equity. They're not for justice. They're only for wickedness. They're only for perversion. They're only for filth, man. And this is why they have a problem with the doctrine that we preach, which is the doctrine of the Most High. It's because these people hate the Most High. This is why you see society being ran the way it's ran, man. That's why you see abortion clinics all throughout the hoods. You see all these idol temples all throughout the country. See, you see all this false doctrine being pushed. These 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 uh, false philosophies being pushed. You see this this rainbow flag lifestyle that's being uplifted and exalted here when the Most High is completely against that. You see, then if you speak against it, if you say if you have an opinion about it and you're not in agreement with it, you're demonized, man. Because it says what verse fifteen. Yea, the truth filleth. Yea, truth filleth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And that's exactly what's happening with the remnant, man. We've been made a prey because we're speaking out against the manners that Esau is establishing in the earth or trying to establish in the earth. We're against it, man. We're not going along with this bullshit. And because we, we, we uh, take that stance and walk in that spirit, you see, we've been made a prey. Now we're targets. This is what it means to be an Israelite, man. You go against the grain. You see, through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shah, and you rebel against the wickedness that goes on in the earth. And because you do that, you are a target, man. Esau has you on his list. And that's for everyone that knows their Israelites, because Esau knows that you've been watching videos. You think he ain't got the he ain't tracking your, your movement on YouTube and social media? He know what the fuck you doing. You think your phone ain't tapped? You think he ain't listening to you? You see, once again, he doesn't need any rebellion in his new world order. So everyone that's in our spirit, that's serving the almighty God, Yahweh, through faith in the son, Yahweh Shai, we are a target, man. Now it says what, though, though? What, is, what does it say? It says, and Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And the Most High doesn't like what's going on in this earth, man. He doesn't like that wickedness is ruling, and, and, and the wicked, um, the righteous is standing up and in in, in rebelling against it. And we're being demonized for it, man. The Most High is not for that. The Most High, is, it, it, it displeases him that there is no righteous judgment going on in the earth, man. You see? And this is why the Lord is going to send Yahweh Shai back to save us. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. Now, going back to uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse uh, 9, it says what? And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. This is daily serious, man. That men, it's like that. Then might a man have seen the present misery. And a, a miserable time is coming. Verse 10 says what? For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children. Whom when they had openly led round about the city, the babes Hanging at their breast, they cast them down headlong from the wall. You see that? 
because these two women kept the customs that the Most High gave unto our forefathers. This is how much this nation of people hates us, man. And the Most High is going to flip that switch and, and put that ancient hatred that these devils have back upon them. And they're going to come against our people, man. You see? Now listen, verse 11. And others that had ran, to, ran together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly being discovered by Philip were all burnt together. You see that? We were being murdered for standing for righteousness. We were being murdered for walking in the ways that the Most High gave us, man. You think this time is different? You think you just woke up to uh, to be an Israelite forever in America? No, man. Great persecution is coming. And that's the spirit that's been on brothers for the last few days, man. Getting Jake that here in the right state of mind. Because when it goes down, a lot of these Jakes out here that that, that know they're Israelites that, you know, like like I always, like, like we say, like, uh, think that's, that this is a fad or this is a trend or this is the new wave. You know what I'm saying? Just doing this for entertainment or for clout. When the, when the shit hits the fan, man, you see, and the most I turns that pressure up, a lot of you are going to be fucking SOL, man, because you thought this was a game when we got all this history here that shows how our enemies truly feel about us, man, and what they've done unto us in the past for standing for the righteous ways that the most has bestowed upon our people. So it says what? Second Maccabees 6 and 11. And others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly, being discovered by Philip, were all burnt together, because they made a conscience, because they made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. You see, verse twelve says, "What now? I beseech those that read this book." That they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for the chastening of our nation. And that's this is why, you know, we're about to go through this time of Jacob's trouble. It's more chastening from the Lord. See, the remnant is going to go through it as a as a chastening to be to be refined, and the two thirds are going to go into it as a chastening for rebellion. And then they would, in, they would be born into the Most High's grace and mercy after death by pain. But when it's all said and done, the entire nation of Israel is going to be healed and brought back into that completely righteous state, uh, all made possible through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. You see? So that's all that's happening. See, the remnant understand this. The two-thirds don't. Verse 13 says what? For it is a token of his great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any long time, but forthwith punished. For not as with other nations whom the Lord patiently forbear to punish till they come to the fullness of their sins, so dealeth he with us. And that's what the Most High does, man. He doesn't punish these heathen nations right away. And this is why you see Esau being able to move and flourish into the earth. You see, become a... Uh, what well, they they were able to through the through the through the most highs according to the most highs will they were able to establish uh, some of the greatest empires the world has ever seen so far. You see, it's because the most high was letting them build uh, their iniquity up till it comes to a fall, man. And that's when the punishment comes upon the heathen, and this is what Esau is being reserved for. You see, the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. The most high being long suffering toward them. But when it's all said and done, great judgment are going to come upon them. That's how the Most High punishes our enemy. He did, he did, he did the same thing with the Amorites, right? But that's why we had to stay in the land of Egypt for four hundred years because the the, the the iniquity of the Amorites was not yet filled or full. But as soon as it was, what happened? The Most High delivered us from Egypt and brought us into the Promised Land. The same thing is happening right now. The Most High is waiting for the, the wickedness of these heathen, especially these Edomites, to come to the fore, and then judgment is going to come upon their ass, and he's going to deliver us, Lord willing, we be a part of that number. So, like it. so now it goes on, verse 14. 
For not as with other nations with whom the Lord patiently forbeareth to punish till they come till they till they become to the fullness of their sins, so dealeth he with us. Lest that being come to the height of sin, afterwards he take vengeance of us, and therefore he never withdraweth his mercy from us, and though he punish with adversity, yet doeth he make do if he never forsake his people. And that's what the world is witnessing right now. You're witnessing that the Most High has never forsaken his people. We were just going through a state of chastisement, which is coming to an end. All according to the Most High's will, man. Verse 17 goes on to say what? But let this that we have, but let this that we are at. Bro, what is going on with this? <laughs> Hold on, man. <laughs> Cause man, you got a lot of them type over. Well, yeah, man. I'm gonna just read this in the <laughs> in, 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 in in the pages, man. Cause good lord. Verse seventeen. Yeah. I'm gonna read it in the pages, man. Y'all just follow along on the screen, or if y'all got your own sixteen eleven KJV. Read it in there. So it says what? Verse 17. But let this that we have spoken be for a warning unto us. And now we will continue to the, to the declaring of the matter in few words. Eleazar, now this is the main point of it. But we just witnessed the tribulation that we were going through up under the Edomites when they were calling themselves the Greeks. Guess what? That same type of tribulation is going to come upon us. Up under these Edomites, as they call themselves, the Americans, man. That's what the time of Jacob's trouble is. You see? Great persecution upon those that fear the Lord. Just like in times past, man. But this will be the final time for it. But now, we want to highlight the star, the star of this story, which is Eleazar. And, and the great bonus that he stood in. Because of the faith that he had. The, a, the faith and the fear. That he had of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah. And this is what the true believers, this is what we have to embody, man. Because we are going to be put into situations where we're going to be threatened with death. And some of us are going to be put to death. But let's take let's take Eleazar's account for an example and embody that. So when you're put in that situation, you can say, well, Eleazar stood bold for it. And we got many accounts of, of brothers and sisters standing in great boldness. Because of the fear and faith that they have of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So we can, so hey, guess what? So that can give us the strength and the courage to do so when we when it ever comes upon us, if that be the Lord's will. Now, it reads, verse 18, Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, an aged man, and of a well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. So they were trying to force him to eat swine. And what does our law say against that? We're not supposed to eat it. You see? Now it says what? Verse 19. But he choosing rather to die gloriously. Than to live stained with such an abomination. Spit it forth. And came of his own accord to the torment. So he was like man. I would rather, I would rather die than go against my power. This is what this is the spirit we have to be in man. Once again, we're not playing this. This is this is a way of life. You see? This is something we live, man. You see? We're not doing this because we get we get to wear fringes or it's it's it, it's it's getting popular or it's a new fad. This is what this is who we are, man. And our forefathers stood in boldness. In the face of the enemy, then rather than to uh, tra a trade and turn their back on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So it goes on to say, verse twenty, as it behooved them to come, that are resolute to stand out against such things as are not lawful for love of life to be tasted. But they had, but they that had the charge of that of that wicked feast. For the old acquaintance they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision, such as was lawful for him to use, and to make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king. So they wanted him to deceive our people into, think, into, into thinking 
that they would that he was eating pork. Telling him to bring a hey, bring, bring whatever lawful meat you want, but just act like it's pork. Basically trying to be, trying to turn Eliezer into a what a sellout. Like a lot of these leaders of these false camps, like your IUICs and your ISUPKs and your Sakaris, a lot of them niggas are sellouts, man. Eliezer wasn't having it, and this is the integrity that we have to that, that we have to move forward with, man. You see. It goes on to say, verse twenty-two, that in that in that in so doing he might be, be delivered from death. You see that? Hey, you might be put into that situation where Esau wants you to be a sellout to save yourself from death and and, and to trade on the brotherhood, man. These are things that we're going to be facing in these times we're coming into, but we must stand strong, man. And may Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah allow us to be even bolder and more courageous in that day, man. It says what? That in doing so he might be delivered from death. And for the old friendship with him, with them, find favor. But he being he began to consider discreetly, and as becoming and as became his age. And as became his age and the the excellency of his ancient years and the honor of his gray head whereunto he was come and his most honest education from a child or rather the holy law made and given by the most high. Therefore he answered accordingly and willed them straight straightwise to send him to the grave. Hey nigga, y'all gotta kill me. Hey, hey, that's the spirit Eliezer was in, man. Hey, y'all gotta kill me, man. And may the most I put us put the spirit upon us to be this bold, man. Cause this is what it's gonna come down to. And all of you Jakes who have who have been out here faking the funk, acting like you've been down for the cause, like you've been down for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And when this tree is shaking, a lot of you are gonna fall off, man. Cause it will be shaking. It's coming, man. That's the whole purpose. Of, that's the whole purpose of Jacob's trouble. The most high is gonna weed out those. Who have been playing games. It goes on to say. Verse 24. For it becometh not our. Our old age. Slot. For it becometh not our age. Said he. In any wise to dis, to dissemble. Whereby many young persons. Might think that Eleazar. Being four score years old. And ten. So he was 90 years old. We were now gone to a strange religion. Exactly. And that, and you got to understand, man, especially for us who teach, we, hey, we're going to be watched. You think people don't know who you are? People watch our videos, all type of stuff, man. So if you put into a situation where you're in the FEMA camp, you got, you got, you might have some believers in there, but you got to stand, you got to continue to stand in boldness, man. You got to continue to move in the spirit of integrity, a spirit and faith, uh, and faith of you. How about me? I was shot because guess what? Those younger sheep can see you and be like, well, shit. Halakia was doing all this preaching and look at him. He, he, he didn't turn his back on the Lord. I might as well do it too. Nah, man. <laughs> you see? You got to fucking stand bold through it all, man, because eyes are on us. Having so great a cloud of witnesses, man. And through you standing in boldness, it's going to cause other believers to rise up and stand in boldness. You see? And continue on in the faith of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Because a lot of us are going to put it, be put into situations where we're going to uh, ultimate them. They're going to uh, give us an ultimatum, man. You either go along with what we got going on and live, or you can continue to believe in this God of yours and die. How do we know this? Because the things that are written the fourth time are written for our learning. Because we're going to come into the same type of situations here in these final days, man. So it goes on to say, what was that? Verse 25. We almost finished. It says what? And so they, through mine hypocrisy and desire to live a little time and a moment longer, should be deceived by me. And I get a stain to my old age and make it abominable. He's like, nah, man, I'm not finna dis I'm not finna disgrace myself, man. Not finna disgrace the most high first and foremost. 
I'm not going along with this bullshit ass plan that y'all coming with. It's wrong. I'm not doing it. You see, that's integrity, man. It says what? Verse 26. For though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the, the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. He's like, hey, hey. And what does that go into? That goes into what Yahweh Shah told us, man. Fear not those that can kill the flesh. And after they've done that, they can do nothing else to you. But for him that can kill the flesh and spirit in hell. Meaning what? Fuck. Don't fear man. Fear Yahweh. And that's what we have to do, man. Fear Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. It goes on to say what? Hey, because we, we, we ain't escaping. We can't escape the most high, man. Verse 27 says what? Wherefore now manfully cha changing this life, I will show Myself such a one as mine age required. And leave a notable example to such as be young. To die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws. You see that? So Eliezer stood as, as an example for us to have in these days here. You see? His fear and faith. In Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah has made ripples throughout history, man. And they're still, we're still reading about it today of what our righteous forefather Eliezer did to give us the strength and the courage through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah to do the same thing if we're put in these type of situations, man. That's why the Most High gave us this book so we can be comforted to know that we ain't the first one that's about the first ones that are that are going through this. We we've been going through this, man. And all of our righteous forefathers who stood in great bonus and and, and, and fear and faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, they overcame, man. So if we do the same things, guess what? We will overcome too. You see? So it says what? We'll read twenty eight again. And leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. So as soon as he made that speech, the, the, those enemies that were trying to get him to, to, to deceive our people, they, they started torturing them, man. Showing you, never trust thine enemy. And most I say what? Whoever consenteth unto them. Shall be had in derision and reproach and trodden underfoot. And they, they're just going to destroy you anyway, man. So it's just best to continue to serve Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. Verse 29 says what? They that led him, changing the good will they bear him a little before, into hatred. Because that's what the, that was always in them anyway. They, they hate us, man. Because the foresaid speeches... Proceeded as they thought from a desperate mind. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, It is manifest unto the Lord that have the holy knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains in body by being beaten. But in soul am well content to suffer these things because I fear him. You see that? All that he went through because he feared the Lord, man. It says what? And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble courage and a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. That's why these things were written, man. They were written for us to cleave unto in these last time, man. And I, I got a feeling that more brothers are going to be bringing these, these same stories out over the next couple of days and weeks, man, because it, it is, it's about to go down. It's about to go down, man. It's, it is no coincidence that a lot of brothers, are, hey, a couple of days ago, a few days ago, the other apostle go ball put out that video, prepare your mind to be a martyr and, martyr. and we got examples of that written for us, man. And if we got to take it there, 
through the Holy Spirit, may the Most High give us the strength. May Yahweh Shai give us the strength, man. So Lord willing, that was edifying and exhorting to the remnant, because that's what we do it for. I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rekakwadash. A double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful little I am out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom. Wah, a ball, a ball.